Hello, this is Aaron from Lo-Fi and DIY, and uh, this is a continuation of the series from I1, from Polaroid I1 to I2. And you might notice I actually got an instant lab right up there. Uh, since I uh, last did this, there have been, I believe, about four, maybe four or five added to my collection. So now it's almost comprehensive. I, now I mentioned that it's not entirely comprehensive. Um, and you'll notice there's a missing uh, Go camera there and a missing Go camera there. There's actually two missing Go cameras below. The top one is the Gen 1. The bottom one is Gen 2. The Go camera is what I'm going to talk to you about today. And I have something that I kind of put together for this video that I think was kind of, it was kind of fun um, and also it was informative. Basically, I just 3D printed really quick this, this thing, <laughs> this monstrosity here. Um, and you see I just wrote one and two on it. And that basically means uh, Gen 1, Gen 2, okay? And then what I would do is I would proceed to turn them on, turn it on, aim it exactly the same place, and take the picture at like just a tiny bit of a stagger because of course I didn't want the flashes to go off at exactly the same time. Um, and I just grabbed the two black uh, Go cameras in here. Now, as I might have mentioned, I believe I mentioned in the first video, I actually really do like the Go camera. Um, but the, uh, I, I like the portability. I love the portability. I take it camping with me. I, I really enjoy um, the things that I get to do with it uh, because it, it does just slip into my pocket. And the price point of the film is very cheap, so I feel like I can burn through a bunch of it. Um, the downside is basically, for me, what I noticed is as a simple point and shoot, um, I was getting a lot of underexposed images, uh, mostly because I think the, the flash is really weak, but there was a lot of so-so pictures. The pictures weren't great, but in a pinch, they were good for what I was trying to do, which is just go out and have fun with a little camera, a little instant camera. If I wanted uh, perfection, I would bring my Nikon uh, DSLR or something. So, um, but but anyway, so I create this thing so that I can do it side by side and quickly test it, but also I thought it would be kind of fun. Uh, it is almost stereoscopic. I think there's just a little bit I could remove from the center if I wanted to squeeze it in a little tighter and actually make a little mini stereo camera out of that. That'd be very easy to do from this stage forward. And, you know, watch my... Um, um, watch my eBay store and you might see something like this eventually sell. Uh, not with the cameras inside, but it's basically uh, something that's much prettier than this, I'm sure. Because <laughs> this is, I, I just printed it for expediency. I printed it very, like that. Like that's actually the bottom. That's normally what I cover up, but because I wanted to print it fast, I printed it that way. Um, so anyway, um, on with a, we're going to do a mini review of the Go camera. That's what I think I'll do here. Um, what they claim the Generation 2 does. First off, of course, I think it, uh, I think there is the same claim that um, it is more recycled material. Okay, that's good. Uh, the second claim is, and you can see uh, right here that this is the uh, standard micro USB. The Go camera, of course, I can't show you it here because it's in between this. I can show you it on this camera here. The Go camera actually has um, USB-C here. Okay. Um, basically, the big difference, if you're looking at the Go camera straight on, if you want to tell, are they giving me a Gen 1 or a Gen 2? This is the Gen 1 logo. This is the Gen 2 logo. And this, like I said, is the uh, USB-C charging port. And this is a micro USB charging port. Otherwise, aesthetically, on the outside, you won't be able to tell the difference. Um, but here's the, here's the thing. The, um, 
my last review ta talking about uh, uh, the uh, Polaroid Now and the Now uh, Plus and the differences in um, the Gen 1 and Gen 2. The Polaroid Now Plus and the Polaroid Now Gen 2, there really aren't many differences. They're really mostly, uh, the, well, there's the USB-C port, and then there's basically the fact that they use recycled materials. Otherwise, it's pretty much the same camera. There's no real improvements to it. That is not the case with this. Not the case with this. They added more apertures, and they added a brighter and a more variable flash. So they actually added some goodies in this. Um, and as I'm, hopefully I'm going to show you, certainly I was pleased, but hopefully I will show you that basically there's a big difference. Okay, I'll start with uh, some pictures uh, in comparison here. Okay, this is, let's see. I wanna make it so that we know what we're looking at here. Okay, so this is one and this is two. Okay, um, pictures wise, um, I took this picture with the one. Okay, it's, it's all right. That's actually, that's actually very typical of this camera. Okay, picture two. Picture two is just much better. To me, it's, to me, it's very obvious. You may not find it as obvious, but I, I think it's very obvious that picture two is much better. It's crisper, brighter. Um, the, the, the quality of the, um, I, I think basically the flash really shows there. Um, one other thing you're seeing with that though, is again, if you have variable apertures to choose from, it's going to pick the right aperture. So that's a really nice touch here. Okay. Um, some of them were really obvious. I'll show you this next set of pictures here. Okay. Picture one. It's just a picture of our backyard in the wintertime. Pretty boring. But you can see it looks pretty dark. Picture two. And I'm going to move it around a little bit so it's a little bit more obvious. No glare. Picture two is just full of information. Look at that. It's just full of information. It chose the right aperture for the scene. And it's it's night and day. That that picture two looks so much, so much better than picture one in that case. Okay. And by the way, um, try to look past the uh, the the photography and <laughs> towards the idea. <laughs> picture one, my dog is lost. Sorry, this ring thing is just doing a number on this. Okay, let's bring it in like this. Picture one, the dog is pretty much lost in the background. Picture two, the dog's certainly there. You know, I'd still, I, I would have, what I should have done, obviously, would have, should have, could have. Um, I should have had less of this light, light part right here and here because, of course, that's how it's metering. It's picking this up. And that's what's losing some of the information. But my dog is that dark and my dog is that color. So, <laughs> so that's a, another example. Now some, uh, it was six of, six of one half dozen of the other. And I think this is one of those. Picture one has great shadow quality. And this is picture one. It actually looks really nice. Picture two has actually uh, no shadow quality. It pushes in the other direction, but but look at that wall and look at that brick now. See, the brick on that one was completely washed out and lost, except for in the shadow. And this one took the other direction and made the actual house look like an actual house and not a complete washed out blob. So um, this revealed that in the shadow, which was it's actually kind of amazing. It looks really great. So this is a six of one and a half dozen of the other. I couldn't really assign a value on which one is better there. Okay. Oh, and yes, uh, me standing right there in the middle was, that was very intentional. Just so you know, I wasn't trying to not capture my shadow there. Okay. And this one here, picture one, that's not bad. Picture two, I think it's much better. 
I think picture two just looks better. I mean, look at the clapboard. Look at the fence. I mean, that's just really much better metering, I think. Okay. And this one here. This is another six and a half, uh, six of one half dozen of the other because the two different meters add up to different effects. This is picture one. And this is picture two. I prefer picture one in this case. The metering ended up working really well. Uh, picture two, um, because of the bright backlighting, um, doesn't look quite as nice. It still looks fine. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I prefer it in this particular case. Okay, and now this is the challenge is when you're taking a picture at a, at a party and you just want to get pictures of people, and you're running around and the party is going on in a house that doesn't have great light um, or the light is turned down or whatever, um, and you just don't want to fuss. You just want to take a picture. And uh, just so in this case, that's uh, picture one. Uh, she's kind of disappearing. And, sorry, picture two, it looks pretty good. So picture two worked out really well in this. Picture one, I feel like she's kind of, this is, this quality right here, this picture one quality is what I experienced all the time uh, when I was shooting on my camping trips with the uh, generation one camera. So yes, it makes a big difference. Having all those different apertures and having a more powerful flash and a more variable flash leads to a much better point and shoot camera. Okay, so I think thank you for um, for watching this video. If you've gotten this far, um, please hit like and like and subscribe and stay tuned. This was uh, uh, this was number four of a series. I do intend to do one or two more of this particular series. So stay tuned. Otherwise, look for my products. They're online uh, on uh, eBay, but also you can find videos about my products uh, right here in Lo-Fi and DIY. Thanks.